watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. Topping the list tonight, two women who spent time in the Granger County Jail are now suing jailers and the county sheriff after they claim they were forced to perform, quote, sex shows behind bars. They also claim former corrections officer Travis Hank Davis sexually abused and exploited inmates for months. In the documents, the plaintiffs say they were cellmates in a female isolation cell directly in front of the jail's control room where Davis could see them and make comments over the loudspeakers. They claim it started with vulgar comments about their bodies and then demands for sex acts. The plaintiff's attorney, Lance Baker, says it's not just the jailer they're blaming. They accuse the county of not doing enough to end the abuse, ultimately committing five different civil rights violations between February through April of 2021. But here we are uh, a year after this took place, and Granger County has not done, to our knowledge, a thing about it. I don't know if they've turned it over to the district attorney's office. If they have, why has the Granger County District Attorney not sought charges or at least to take these to the, the Granger County Grand Jury uh, for some sort of indictment? Officer Davis was fired in April of 2021. Along with Davis, the suit named Sheriff James Harville, Jail Administrator Chris Harville, and another corrections officer, Leonard Dalton. The claims range from emotional distress to invasion of privacy and more. The suit does say the plaintiffs are asking for over $15 million in compensation and punitive damages. Next in the Big 7, state lawmakers are considering a bill to ban correctional institutions from using restraints on pregnant prisoners. This bill could address the detention of pregnant women to ensure they are not undergoing undue additional stress. If passed, jails and prisons will be prohibited from shackling pregnant detainees on state and local levels, including during labor, transport to a medical facility, delivery and postpartum. The use of restraints while someone is uh, giving birth, not only is it dehumanizing, but it's also dangerous. Um, it puts the woman in a position that could be potentially fatal for herself or the child. The bill would also mandate annual training for corrections employees who supervise or transport female inmates. But there are also exceptions, including if the person in custody poses a flight risk, immediate self-harm to themselves or the unborn child, or if they are part of a classification in jail that requires the use of restraints. Next on the Big 7, five students are facing charges after a gun was brought to school. It happened Monday at William Blunt High School. The sheriff's office says a school resource officer got a notification through the school's text-to-tip system that a boy at the Freshman Academy had a gun in his backpack and had been showing it to other students. A spokesperson says the SROs on campus made contact within a matter of minutes and found the handgun. That student has been charged as a juvenile with carrying a weapon on school property. Also, four other students are charged as juveniles with threatening mass violence at school. The spokesperson says the four allegedly knew about the gun and failed to report it. Next on the Big 7, Campbell County deputies say they arrested a driver after a three-county chase. They hit speeds over 100 miles per hour. Early last Saturday morning, deputies tried to pull over a car that looked like one reported as stolen, but the driver would not stop. Officers trailed the car through Anderson and Knox counties. At one point, deputies clocked the car traveling 107 miles per hour, allegedly passing vehicles on the shoulder of the interstate. Eventually, the suspect dumped the car in Powell and ran off. That suspect, who you see here, Brandon Lee Mays, gave up and was arrested. Deputies say Mays told them he ran because he had drugs in his underwear. They say they found several plastic bags there with narcotics inside. Mays is facing charges of evading arrest and drug possession. Next on our list, you'll have to keep wearing masks on planes for a little while longer. The CDC has extended the travel mask mandate for another two weeks. This move comes in response to an uptick in COVID-19 cases to allow health leaders now to monitor the situation as well as the latest Omicron subvariant. The requirement for masks on trains and planes was set to expire this coming Monday. That's now been pushed back to May 3rd. The CDC is awaiting indications of whether the increase in cases correlates to a rise in adverse outcomes before announcing a less restrictive mask policy for travel. Here in East Tennessee, the Knox County Health Department released its COVID-19 update for the week ending April 9th. KCHD says nine more Knox County residents have died from the virus. So 
By the health department's count, a total of 1,355 have died from COVID. Also, we're seeing hospitalizations and new COVID cases being reported around the same levels they were the previous week, which are both similar to the same levels we saw in early July. Next on our list today, mark the first day of early voting for the Knox County primary as polls open this morning across Knox County. Candidates for several offices are on the ballot, including Knox County Mayor, Knox County Sheriff, and four Knox County Commission seats. There are also five Knox County School Board seats on the ballot. In the last election, school board positions were not partisan. This changed last year, which is why we're seeing school board members in the Knox County primary for the first time. Early voting runs Mondays through Saturdays until April 28th. The final day to request an absentee ballot for the Knox County primary comes a couple days earlier on April 26th. Election day is Tuesday, May 3rd. And last on our list, Tennessee Supreme Court is letting the state's redistricting plan go into effect. Justices this afternoon overturned a lower court ruling that had blocked the new state Senate election maps. Those redrawn districts have been approved by the General Assembly and signed into law by Governor Lee. You may remember three voters sued, arguing the map violated the state constitution and how it numbered districts around Nashville. Justices now say the block was wrong because it did not consider the impact to election officials or on the public when it comes to having orderly elections and avoiding voter confusion. Justice Sharon Lee disagreed with the majority ruling of the court. Would-be state Senate candidates affected by the change now have until tomorrow afternoon to file their paperwork.